Hi guys, welcome to video four of the gases unit. This vid video is going to be on the motion of gas molecules and the root mean squared speed. This is sections 10.7 and 10.8 in your book, so read through those two sections, look at the examples just to help you out um, and make sure you have a clear idea of all of these topics. Just to review, we're gonna look at temperature of gases again. So remember that the absolute temperature of a sample of gas is a measure of its average kinetic energy. So remember, this temperature needs to be absolute, which means it's Kelvin. So absolute is the average kinetic energy. Uh, remember, kinetic energy is measured in joules. Uh, mass has to be in kilograms and velocity is in meters per second. So temperature is just a measure of the average kinetic energy. So the faster the particles are moving, the higher their average kinetic energy, um, which means the higher the temperature. Uh, something to circle, star, highlight, whatever, is that gases at the same temperature have the same kinetic energy. Okay, so same temperature, same kinetic energy. That's because absolute temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. What this means is if you have two gases that are at the same temperature, they have the same average kinetic energy. Um, if your absolute temperature is doubled, uh, the average kinetic energy is doubled. So temperature is proportional to kinetic energy. Next thing that we're going to look at is called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Um, the reason that we use this distribution is because it's hard to calculate something about just one gas particle. So what we actually use is a statistical anal analysis, which is just a distribution graph like this. What this allows us to see is that at higher temperatures, so this red curve is at 1,000 Kelvin. Notice how broad this is. It comes all the way out to probably 3,000 meters per second versus this tiny peak, which really ends at about 1,000 meters per second. This shows us that as temperature increases, it's more probable that the speed and the kinetic energy will be higher. So this broader graph, if we read it, right, means that the speed is going to be greater. So if we take a look at another distribution, this shows us 0 degrees Celsius versus 100 degrees Celsius, or 273 Kelvin versus 373 Kelvin. Um, although collectively the molecules in a sample have an average kinetic energy and average speed, the individual molecules are moving at different speeds. So some are moving faster, some are moving slower. Um, so what this means is all of the particles at the same temperature like this 100 degrees, all have a wide range of speeds. Because notice that at 100 degrees Celsius, if we actually look at the area under the curve, um, a large fraction of the molecules move at high speed. This is why a 100 degrees Celsius sample has a higher kinetic energy, because of the area under the curve. This just gives the relative fraction of molecules that have the speeds. Um, again, as temperature increases, the relative speed of the particles also increase. Um, another thing, notice that the distribution curve broadens as we go to higher temperatures, which tells us that speeds will also increase as temperatures increase. So this is just showing the um, background to how we know that higher temperatures have higher kinetic energies. You do want to be able to read a graph like this, though. So if I would ask you know, which has the higher speed, the zero degree Celsius or the 100 degree Celsius, because the 100 degree Celsius curve is more broadened, that actually has the higher speed. So with speed of molecules, um, in any graph, we can find three different speeds. The peak of the graph is the most probable speed. So it's mu mp, most probable. Um, this is just the speed that is exhibited by the largest number of molecules um, versus the average speed, right, which is just the mean of all of the molecules. And then we have what's called the root mean squared. Um, this is the speed in which the kinetic energy is equal 
to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Typically, root mean squared and average speed are going to be very similar. Um, if there's a difference, it's very minute. So again, temperature is related to average kinetic energy. Um, individual molecules have different speeds, and these graphs show us three different. We have most probable speeds. Um, we have the average speed, which is just the mean. And then we have the root mean squared, which is the one that's associated with average kinetic energy. So the root mean squared speed is the one that is probably the most important. Um, and that is because the root mean squared speed is used to calculate average kinetic energy. So we actually use, when we calculate the average kinetic energy, 1 half m v rms squared. So again, this is root mean squared speed. Um, what we have to make note of is that some molecules will move faster, some will move slower, um, and that root mean squared is close to the average speed. Um, we do use root mean squared to calculate average kinetic energy though. So with root mean squared speed, how to calculate is using this equation right up here. The root mean squared speed is equal to the square root of 3 times r, which is the ideal gas law constant, times t in Kelvin, divided by the molar mass. When we plug everything in here, we use the r value of 8.314 because it's in joules. Joules gives us kilograms times meter squared per second squared. So we use this 8.314, which means T has to be in Kelvin, because it has to cancel with this K. And molar mass must be in kilograms per mole. Okay, again, that's because it has to cancel this kilogram out. So to calculate root mean squared speed, it's the square root of 3 times R times T divided by the molar mass, which is in kilograms per mole, because we're working with joules. The biggest thing from this is that as molar mass increases, the root mean squared speed decreases. So heavy particles are slower. If you look at this graph down here, oxygen has the largest molar mass of all of these. Notice that it moves the slowest. If we look for the average speed, or the most probable speed, we just look at the peak straight down versus hydrogen all the way over here. Right, hydrogen has the lowest molar mass, it moves the fastest, it has the broadest distribution. Oxygen moves the slowest, hydrogen moves the fastest. That's because hydrogen has the lowest molar mass. So a way to think about it is think about like an offensive lineman on a football team versus a running back. Typically your running back is going to move faster because they're smaller. Right, The offensive lineman um, is usually heavier and so he moves slower than the running back. That's an analogy for this. As molar mass goes up, speed goes down. So here's just an example. You have a tube, and you've plugged it up on the left side with HCl. You've plugged it up on the right side with ammonia. So these are both the gaseous forms. So we have gaseous HCl, gaseous NH3. If we put these at each end of the tube, they will diffuse through and actually form a solid. Right, we have HCl plus NH3. If we do the reaction, we get NH4Cl. Okay, it's going to produce a solid. Now, where will they meet, though? That's what we have to look at. Well, when we want to know how fast the gases move, let's look at the molar mass. We have HCl, okay, about 36, uh, what, 0.5, roughly versus NH3, which is about 17 grams per mole. Which of these is going to move faster? The NH3 is going to move faster through the tube. Will they meet halfway? No, NH3 is going to move faster, so they'll probably meet right here at A, because NH3 moves twice as fast as HCl, so they'll meet right here, and they'll form their solid at point A. Right? Again, it's because NH3 has a lower molar mass, so it will move significantly faster than HCl. 
So when we think about speed of gases um, and their velocities, what we can actually look at are two terms, effusion and diffusion. Okay, this is because of the speed of molecules. Effusion is just the escape of gas molecules through a tiny hole. Um, think about it like a balloon. Um, the gas molecules, as they collide around, they will escape through a tiny hole. Here is an argon balloon and a helium balloon. Notice the argon one is actually dangling because it's more dense than air versus helium. Um, the difference in molar masses actually explains why helium effuses faster. Okay, because helium has a very low molar mass, argon has a very high molar mass. So the helium molecules move faster, they collide more, and they effuse faster. Argons don't move as fast, so they don't collide as fast, and they don't effuse as fast. And then we have diffusion. So the difference now is effusion is through a small hole. Diffusion is just how they spread out. Okay, so diffusion is just how the gases spread out through a space or through a substance. Based on effusion and diffusion, we can actually uh, relate these with molar masses. So it can diffuse, it can spread to fill a volume, or it can effuse, it can move through a small opening. Remember, the lighter particles, the lower molar mass, move faster. Well, Graham's law relates the molar mass of two gases to their speeds. Um, the effusion rate is inversely proportional to the square root of their molar mass. So this is Graham's law, right? The rate of gas one, so the rate of effusion for gas one over the rate of effusion for gas two equals the square root of molar mass of two over molar mass of one. You can also use density. We won't use density as much, but you can actually use it. You just swap out molar mass for density. So just remember, lighter always moves faster, right? So lighter particles always move faster. When you want the effusion rate, okay, we'll use rate of one over rate of two equals square root mass two over square root of mass one. This is Graham's law. We'll look at some practice with Graham's law and root mean squared, um, but these are the definitions and the formulas that you will need. Um, the next video is actually going to look at real gases versus ideal gases, and then that will actually be it for this unit.